Hello friends, thank you for watching this video. I am Muhammad, and in this video we're gonna be discussing the latest changes that happened to .NET Aspire. Over the last two weeks, Microsoft has released .NET Aspire Preview 5, as well a couple of days ago, Preview 6. And within these new changes, a lot of new functionality that uh, the community has been asking for has been added, as well a lot of new enhancement that's gonna take Aspire to the next level. So let's explore all of these new functionality that has been added, as well, let's create some sample project and we can compare them to the previous ones. So let's get started. So as we can see here, Preview Aspire 5 has been released on the 18th of April and Preview Aspire 6 has been released on the 23rd of April. So in a fairly short term between them. And the main changes that happened between uh, Aspire Preview 4 and Aspire Preview 5 is they have introduced a lot of breaking changes. So from the packages, the way those reference has been added, there's a lot of different enhancement to the application model, the HTTP, the, had the forwarding headers, the improvement to the different mounting APIs. So there's a lot of, I would say, quality of life improvement that happens with the Aspire Preview 5. We can see here from the list how the improved volume mount of API has been added, RabbitMQ UI management has been added, automatic password generation, API expression for Docker builds. So we can see all of these different functionalities that were needed in order for us to utilize our application in actually real life scenario, not only in development mode, has been added in order for us to make sure we are able to utilize them. So for example, with this here, all of these different environments that we currently have can be dynamically now injected into our application. So for example, if we're trying to run this front end application here, instead of having a staging and the build argument for this application here directly is a static string. What we can do is we can actually extract those from different configuration. It could be like uh, in Azure Key Vault, it could be within different secret management and directly inject those here. So that could be a really added value in order for us to make this as a more polished version for our production environment. We also have here the we have a first thing interpolation with environment, which means that whenever our application is building up, those are not actually going to be run. Once the container has been run and basically the, con the container is being executed, then those parameters will come into place. So that defer, so there's a defer string interpolation mechanism that's going to be happening here in order for us to have these environment variable running at execution time. So this will not going to be utilized within the build of that image. And this is going to be really cool. As well, there's uh, changes to the dashboard. So within the dashboard, there's going to be introduction of such structured logs. We can see here within the structured logs, a different tracing mechanism and messaging item that has been added so now we can actually able to see within those traces what's coming from messages which is coming from a database etc etc there's also enhancements on the sourcing of where they're actually coming from and we can see here for example in this rabbit mq example we can see the source of that message that has been processed and how it's actually being utilized from a security point of view we can see here that there's a new dashboard enhancement when it comes to security the otlp endpoint has been enhanced so this security feature is going to be a, play a crucial role for the not pq6 because there's a new exciting features when it comes to security in the time pq6 so i would say here this would like the link the foundation for this and basically there is also the otlp endpoint security so within that we'll have different authentication point so it could be a certificate it could be ipi key or it could be completely unsecure so this security also happened with the dashboard authentication so we can see here within the dashboard authentication we can see now we have the open id connect authority the client id secret we can see also some dashboard authentication enhancement now the dashboard support open id connect and within those we are actually able to utilize open id in order for us to authenticate against our dashboard we have the ability to add the authority the client id and the secret everything here basically works together in order to have a much more secure utilization of our dashboard and this will feed into a much into much more better functionality within the .NET Preview 6. As well we can see here that we have resource service and port security so now we have full support for client certificates and through that we're able to actually have a resource security available for us. As well some cross-site scripting fixes, some performance improvement across all of the functionality. There's now service discovery API changes and within the service discovery so no matter what other services are, are trying to utilize this so there is some breaking changes i would say here into how we used to utilize them within preview 4 pre um, preview 4 3 and 2 so within this we'll be able to see that there's a new enhancement that's coming to the discovery and within those we'll be able to refer to these new services in a better way within our uh, implementation as well from a developer tooling there's enhancement to visual studio code dev toolkit as well as visual studio tooling updates and as well we can see here that these are some of the breaking changes that has been included so 
the component breaking changes so in previous we can just say add redis now we have to say add redis client and basically and basically adding the keyword client here whenever we're trying to add any of these services will make it much more easier for us to emphasize that we're actually adding a client to our a client object to our application to basically our web application builder on top of that there is azure improvement where azure is, back, is much more able to recognize our aspire application so if we're utilizing any of those azure services it will be automatically able to recognize that for example we utilize this cosmos and from there we're able to directly utilize whatever database we're having inside cosmos and it also add out functionality to provisioning some azure services locally in order for us to try to mimic those azure functionality on our local environment rather than trying to try to deploy to azure and try to experiment with it there major enhancement came to azure event hub and azure ai so within azure event hub now we're actually able to add this to our uh, aspire application and directly utilize event hub in, from this and this is going to be crucial for any distributed or event driven architecture that we have on our .NET application and for open ai we can actually specify what type of gpt we want to utilize and have that functionality directly available through our aspire application order for us to refer to it and one of the biggest surprises to be honest is going to be the aws support so starting with aspire 5 there's a library where we can actually deploy our aspire application to aws and this is going to be a major a step forward into cloud interoperability because basically our application can live at the same time on Azure and on AWS and this will facilitate to have a backup solution between those different cloud providers as well have the capability of freely choose whatever cloud provider we want to use within our application so if our project is already on AWS we don't really have to migrate everything to Azure in order for us to use Aspire Aspire is now actually being supported within AWS and we can see now as well within the AWS CLI and the AWS SDK is now have full support for Aspire will actually continue with support for Aspire. And one of the new enhancements as well is by utilizing CloudFormation. So CloudFormation is AWS version of Terraform if you want to utilize it in order for you to create infrastructure as code. And through that, you will be able to see Aspire will be able to accommodate for CloudFormation because it will automatically recognize them and actually be able to build them. And lastly, there's some changes to the manifest and to the volume and to the endpoint that we're going to be utilizing. On top of all of that, these are only the changes that came to that not Aspire Preview 5 and two days ago that not Preview 6 Aspire Preview 6 has been released and within Preview 6 there's a pre breaking changes again within Preview 6 there's a changes again to the server, server discovery APIs as well there is and any API from before that has been marked as obsolete has been completely removed and the major changes is basically the dashboard authentication so now whenever you want to utilize a dashboard you need to enter the token to log in and basically it asks you here where you can find your token so basically whenever you're trying to run your uh, dashboard locally on your machine as we can see here it basically gives you a local uh, a local token that you can actually utilize and this local token here you're going to basically need to copy paste it and put it into your dashboard in order for you to log in there's a new resources and component and basically Quadrant has now been added to the support list of Aspire. So Quadrant, if you don't know, it's a major vector database which has been utilized in machine learning because basically it allows to store mathematical inputs and basically allows us to store large data set that we're going to be utilizing within our machine learning. Quadrant is a major vector database written in Rust and it's widely popular among machine learning enthusiasts. So that's seeing it here available within Aspire is really, really impressive. As well, there's some update to the app host and within the app host now we have container runtime arguments we're actually able to see that we are able to specify those custom arguments within docker or podman in order for us to be able to run the container the way we want there is some enhancement to the argument on the project itself and some custom environment variable to a connection string which is really interesting and lastly there's some enhancement to unit testing so testing is always going to be one of the crucial part when we're developing any type of projects we're going to have unit testing we're going to have integration testing we're going to have to stress testing etc etc so testing has been introduced within aspire so now there is a testing APIs that actually can we can actually utilize in order for us to test our application within Aspires and these are going to be the major changes so what we're going to be doing right now is we're going to be updating to the latest version of Aspire and we're going to be following the guide that has been available for us so let's open our terminal and the first thing that we need to do is we need to put .NET workload update and they say this will update all of our workload and as we can see here that Aspire Preview 6 has started to being populated and once Aspire Preview 6 has been installed successfully on our machine we can actually start utilizing it so this will take a few seconds to complete and now we can see it has been completed as, uh, com successfully and we have workload aspire has been successfully completed so now after that we need to put dotnet workload install aspire i'm just following the commands here 
And once we do that, we can see that Aspire has already, is already installed on my machine and it's available for me. So what I want to do is I want to utilize the Aspire starter template. So if we come here to the CLI, we can see now within this, in order for us to create Aspire, we have a, an, an Aspire starter pack. So that's what I'm going to be doing. So I'm going to put .NET new, I can put list Aspire. Oops, let's clear this up. And we forgot the S. So here we can see that we have Aspire service default. We're going to be exploring the Aspire starter. So we're going to put .NET new Aspire dash starter and now we're basically creating a new fully new uh, Aspire application based on the latest preview six changes. So now if I open this in Visual Studio Code, we can see here that automatically it created an SLN, it created a web interface for us to utilize, it created our API that we're gonna be utilizing, as well it created our app host, which is gonna be our brain to manage all these different services. And we have our service default for our extensions that we're gonna be utilizing within this. And what I'm interested in is actually, first of all, is to check how this has changed. So we can see here now, if I'm going to also compare another application that I have, which is running on .NET Preview 4, so we can see those changes. Let's put these side by side. So this is, although it's a completely different application, but at least we can able to see the main differences between them. So we can see here the changes. So before that, when you're adding a project, we can we have we were able to directly name get the project name, and this was also being stored in like an enum a class where we actually be able to refer to it. On the other hand, within the Aspire 7, which is actually introduced with Aspire 5, we had to put the projects keyword and then actually the service that we want to refer to. As well, on top of that, we are actually able to see now that, for example, for the front end, we have with external HTTP endpoint and with the references. So the references already existed before, but with external HTTP endpoints, now we are actually able to see it. And if we open this up again, if we open up the service defaults and we open extensions here, and also let's open service default and check the extensions. So within the extensions here, we can actually able to see that we have still the open telemetry, the default health check, the default service default discovery, but within the configuration of the default open telemetry now we have more functionalities to be actually utilized and what i'm going to do here is i'm just going to focus now on the latest changes within the aspire preview 6 and i'm going to open my terminal i'm going to be navigating to the v7 app host and i'm just going to put dot net build and it's going to build my entire application now and then i'm just going to put dot net run and now when i run this right now it will basically run my aspire application for this new application here and basically we're going to be able to see the new authentication mechanism so now we can see here that this is the token that i need to utilize in order for me to log in so now if i open this up and i go back to my web browser here and open it up in a new tab we'll be able to see now in order for me to access the dashboard i need to find my token so what i'm going to do i'm just going to copy this token here that has been provided to me and i'm going to paste it click on log in and now i'm able to see how aspire let me just zoom in a bit how is the new head.net uh, aspire is actually running we're able to see see that uh, we have almost the same structure as before when it comes to the project name, if it's running or not, the one that has been started, the sources, the different endpoint that's going to be utilizing. If we take a look at the logs, we're actually able to see that the logs are actually running. If I go back to the resources, if I can actually check the project information here. So this is going to be a part of the details of the project. So we can see where it's actually located on my machine. We can see the endpoint if I want to actually refer to it. And if I click on it here on the endpoint, we can see the HTTPS as well as HTTP. So if I click on it here, we can see within the HTTP, I'm able to load all of this different information. If I click here and try to run the front end of my project, we can see now my Blazor application is up and running. And if I click on weather, I'm actually able to pull down the same information that's available in my API inside my uh, front end application. As well, now, if I go back to the console here, we'll be able to see that through the selection, I'm able to see more logs available for me. Now I have more structured implementation where I'm able to see the resource, the time of the request, and the message, I can actually see the view of this and the, and the information being populated outside with all of the different value that has been available for me from the different telemetries that is available within my extensions. If I click on traces, we'll be able to see all of the different traces from the front end to the back end. If I click on view, we'll be able now to see a more structured approach to this. I can also see metrics. I can choose a resource. I want to see the front end of this or the back end services. I can see, for example, the active service time. Again, this has been introduced previously, the table mode. So when I able actually to see all of this, 
and we can see that it's and in general it's a much more better on polish uh, implementation of aspire since we last saw it in the preview four and we can see it's actually taking the right step forward in order for us to get it to production ready david fowler and the, and the microsoft team have done an amazing job to get to make it and to achieve it and make it available uh, uh, in today's state there's a lot of work that still needs to be done but as we can see aspire is maturing in a very very rapid rate and it's actually a uh, more impressive one actually being launched the first time so i hope this video was helpful to give you a quick sneak preview about what's coming up in aspire and the latest changes if you have any questions please make sure you put them in the comments down below if you have any clarification please feel free to reach out thank you very much for watching and have a great day